Welcome back, or if we haven't met before, I'm Bev, counseling hypnotherapist and co-founder of Rosie Window Productions. Thank you for joining us today through Rosie Window and Into Wellness. One of the topics that we keep hearing about from parents and educators is the rising instances of anxiety. And this seems to be across the spectrum of ages. And although the practices and tools we have discussed throughout this series are supportive of lowering anxiety levels, in this, our ninth episode, we will have a closer look at anxiety. What causes us to have anxiety? A certain amount of anxiousness when we are coming into a new situation or one that makes us uncomfortable is normal. And certainly there is a reason that our brain helps our body pump up the blood flow and produce extra cortisol and adrenaline. So our mind and our body become hyper tuned up and gets what it needs to react to an urgent situation. We can experience a fight, flight or freeze response as nature kicks in to protect us. Healthy stress will motivate us to remove ourselves from danger or to address the situation in an appropriate fashion. Sometimes though, the anxiety may not fit the situation. What happens when our thoughts run away on us with unfounded fears of future events, or perhaps it's ruminating on past events through a lens of negativity? If these habitual patterns get away on us, anxiety can be debilitating emotionally and physically. Anxiety not addressed can cause physical symptoms such as nausea, dizziness, chest tightness, difficulty breathing, tingling, headaches, heart palpitations, and more. Keeping people from jobs and school, anxiety can stop someone from attending events that when healthy, they would look forward to. Sometimes we can connect anxious feelings to a specific situation, such as social anxiety, when it is very uncomfortable or impossible to put yourself in a room with other people. Other times there seems to be no specific reason for the feelings and there may even be a persistent underlying feeling of anxiousness that is always present. We can be mindful of changes in behavior of those around us. If you see a shift in mood or attitude, be sure to check in with that person. Throughout this series, we've offered concepts and resources that are helpful in bolstering positive mental health and strong self-esteem, which help in mitigating overwhelming anxiety. But there are some tactics that may be helpful when dealing with stressful situations and helping our children manage their stress levels and put tools in place to continue managing stress throughout their lives. If you feel as though you're all alone in this world or are the only one dealing with certain thoughts and feelings, having someone who you can trust to talk to may make all the difference. To be a trustworthy listener is to not judge that person who is disclosing difficult feelings. It also means that we aren't dismissing their feelings or concerns trusting that that person will not judge you and will either listen or help you find a solution. If a child comes to you with a problem, it's not helpful to tell them not to be silly, even though someday when they're grown, they might realize that that problem was pretty small in the large scheme of things. But at this moment in time, it is something that needs attention. We all need to be heard. And listening is a skill that takes some practice. Actually hearing someone is so important and when that person is doing well, happy and healthy, it creates a wonderful bond. When a child is struggling, perhaps with feelings they don't even understand, it is so important that that bond is in place and that they feel as though they have someone to turn to. You can model this with your spouse, colleagues, and friends. Active listening is another phrase that we hear quite regularly, and it is challenging sometimes not to be formulating a response when someone is only partially through their dialogue or taking a moment to decide how you would like to respond instead of that knee-jerk reaction. Sometimes as a parent, it is difficult to take a breath and a step back so that that response you give your child is not a conversation stopper. Safe, confidential understanding and non-judgmental conversation are essential to keep honest communications open. Active listening also means setting aside the technology, turning off the TV and letting that child know that they are so important that you will listen until you understand what they need. Another important aspect of being that good listener 
and establishing that you understand what the speaker has told you is understanding what they need from you. Are they looking for a sounding board to vent? Sometimes that is perfect. Saying things out loud can often bring clarity and precision to a situation that has been a jumbled mess of thoughts. Or did they come to you for help to find a solution? Again, we can be mindful of what level of participation they would like from us. And we don't need to take it personally if they don't heed our advice. Just as they have trusted you with their honest thoughts, they should be able to trust that you will be honest with them, letting them know that you don't have the solution they are looking for, or that you don't agree with the solution that they have come up with. But you can help them brainstorm something or talk about possible outcomes. As parents, there is always that protective grizzly bear effect. We need to be mindful that we don't dash into action with teeth bared and claws out. If your child is having difficulty with another student at school and they come to you with a story, perhaps the bear will begin to roar with no regard for what that child actually needs. Or the opposite could be the case. Perhaps your child is looking for that protector to take a stand on their behalf, but you think that the situation doesn't warrant any action at all. Active listening, pointed questions, and an inquiry on what they need will be helpful. In either situation though, be mindful to keep the claws in and engage in active listening with the teachers and other parents. A bit of a reminder here that we are all human. And as we discussed in previous episodes, have a look at why you are feeling the way you do. Is it a protective instinct kicking in or not kicking in? Or have some memories of your school days shifted your perspective on the narrative you've heard from your child? If you were bullied in school, you may have a stronger reaction as your amazing mind brings back the feelings you dealt with as a child, how your parents reacted, or how you wish they would have reacted. If you cruise through school, mostly getting along with everyone, and the only issues you had with other students were insignificant, just normal learning how to socialize events, perhaps you would lean the other way and are gonna underreact to a story your child has told you. Either way, what your child would like would be considered as well as further exploration. There may even be times when they would rather you aren't involved, but you feel you must investigate. Be truthful and trustworthy. Stay calm and get help if you need to. As adults, we can feel that extra stress if we are not prepared for a situation. Last minute shopping for that dinner party you are hosting, notes that aren't as precise for a business presentation, or even putting off all the things that need to be done before you take a holiday. So there you are frantically whipping through the list and hoping nothing gets missed. Being prepared is huge. We can help our children prepare for upcoming events, asking them if they need help studying, making a list of what they need for a sleepover, or even being the timekeeper, helping them schedule time for study or practice. We can also point out how prepared they might be already. Nervousness going into a dance competition might warrant a recap of how well they're doing in practice and how proud you are of their hard work and perseverance. Even pointing out that that nervous energy is pretty normal and that you can imagine that most of the dancers have that nervous energy that they're feeling. One of the suggestions that I might give my clients when discussing nervousness, anxiety, is to reframe that. It's excitement, it's energy from anticipation. Maintaining some structure is very helpful. Most of us do better with structure in our schedules. Sleep is generally better if we're getting to bed and getting up close to the same times. For long-term scheduling, perhaps a family calendar, so no events, assignments, or exams take anyone by surprise. Life is busy, and the weeks do fly by. I think we can all agree that it's the last minutes in life, the things that take us by surprise, that are the most anxiety-ridden. They can turn a fun-filled day into an ordeal. Scheduling the tasks that are repetitive, like laundry and cleaning, can also keep us feeling more organized and uncluttered. Even planning meals can make a trip to the grocery store a more relaxed event. You are the parent and you can limit and monitor what your children are watching and participating in. Just as we mentioned in the episode on modeling with your children being influenced by who they are in contact with, we can also note the behavior and stress levels with the types of games they play or the movies that they watch. Take an active role and know what the content is. 
There has been controversy for years about the effect of violence on TV or in video games, and depending on which article you read, you may or may not find the answers you were expecting, but perhaps we can look at it from the perspective that is more personal. Each of us are unique individuals. What might seem to affect one child may cause stress in another. Most of the fundamentals for good mental health are tied to the fundamentals of maintaining good physical health, getting enough sleep, good nutrition, physical activity, socializing, and trying our best to find balance with work and play. There are so many supportive resources available for us. If you haven't managed your stress levels, if you find yourself overwhelmed, it will be very difficult to model effective stress management skills for your children. Ask for help to get organized. Research techniques. Share family chores. Take a self-care break. Relax. Socialize or seek professional help. These are all good behaviors to demonstrate managing stress or perhaps engage in some of the tools we discussed in episode four. Just know that you don't have to turn your world upside down to begin moving in a different direction. Just an honest, clear picture of where you would like to be and what you would like for your family. And then one small step at a time, you hold the key. As we end this episode today with a short guided meditation on alleviating anxiety, we hope the rest of your day is peaceful, calm, and fulfilling. Unless you're listening to this while driving or participating in any activity that requires your full attention, you can sit back, close your eyes, and take a nice deep breath. When we notice our breathing, it's just a lovely way to let our mind and our body know of our intention to relax. Notice as you take another breath how all of the muscles in your body can rest and relax. We all have moments of anxiousness in our lives. And as we become more and more aware of our own feelings and our own stress, it's wonderful that we can become aware of what our children need to feel happy, well, safe, and loved. Sometimes it feels very challenging to take a moment out of a busy day to listen carefully. Sometimes it's challenging to take a moment and take a breath before reacting or responding to something that our children have told us. How wonderful it is that you can Invite this feeling of peaceful calm, of restful relaxation into your body whenever you need to, simply by taking a step back, taking a breath. How wonderful it is that you have found the tools to allow you to model such wonderful behavior for your children to help them feel safe and secure, grounded, to help them move through those times in their lives that they feel anxious. You can be very proud of yourself for taking those moments, those times, to reassure and to show your children a positive and productive way to move through life's stresses. And now as you take a moment, take a breath, you can feel that wonderful energy moving up through your body, opening your eyes to look forward to another wonderful day.